CDA is cylinder deactivation. And it's not a new term. It actually comes from a passenger car market where they've been doing cylinder deactivation for some time. And what you do is you turn off the fuel injection and you turn off the valve train to the cylinder. And what that does is it reduces the pumping work from the engine and you can save fuel. On the diesel side, another benefit that's actually really important is when you have fewer cylinders fueling, you get increased temperature for the exhaust system. So Jacobs has been working on developing engine brakes for, for some time, and we've been disabling the valve train since probably 2010, 2011. And on those systems, we turn off the main event, just like you would in cylinder deactivation. You turn off the valve motion, and we developed this technology for our two-stroke engine brakes. That exact same technology we apply in CDA for emissions and after treatment temperature warm up and improve fuel consumption. For our overhead cam valve trains, we use the rocker shaft. And it's not shown, but there are passages in the rocker shaft where we send oil with a control solenoid down the rocker shaft and down to the nose of the rocker arms. And in normal operation, the oil pressure there is very low, which is just a little bit of leakage. When we energize the solenoid, then we send engine oil pressure, maybe 50, 60 PSI, down the rocker arm to the bridge. And in that state, the bridge will transition from a lock condition to an unlock condition. And then the motion of the main event is then lost in the valve bridge. We don't transmit motion to the valves. And that's how we deactivate the intake and the exhaust valve motion. The primary design we have is our collapsing bridge or collapsing crosshead, some different terms for it. And the way it works is inside the bridge, we have our locking mechanism, which is oil activated. So oil comes through the rocker arm and depresses an internal pin. And then that allows the mechanism to collapse. And that's how we absorb all the main event lift from a heavy duty diesel. For type five valve trains, we also have the mechanism integrated into the push rod. Uh, and you can see this is on top of the push rod. And the same mechanism, uh, oil is fed through the rocker arm to the top of the push rod. And then this can absorb the cam lift when oil pressure is applied. The nice part about th these types of systems is we're integrating them into bolt-on components. We're not modifying the engine block. We don't have to machine out anything in the block. It's all added into the valve train, which is kind of the area that we focus on. Why cylinder deactivation for heavy duty diesel? One big issue that our customers have come to us with is the SCR systems don't work well at low temperatures. And as emissions requirements get more stringent, those low temperature regions become a larger contribution to the overall test cycle. The, the urea injection systems remove 99% of the pollutants when they're hot. But when they're cold, they can be down in the 80s or even 60%. So, Driving up the temperature of the exhaust system is one way to improve the effectiveness of those systems. Now, cylinder deactivation is one of the rare technologies that can improve that temperature without paying a fuel penalty. Systems that add fuel or run the engine inefficiently, those are all going to pay a fuel penalty, whereas cylinder deactivation reduces pumping work on the cylinders that are deactivated, and it increases the, the temperature by lowering the air-fuel ratio on the active cylinders. So it's really does both at the same time and really is more attractive technology for that reason. I'm going to show you uh, what's inside of our collapsing bridge and what makes it different from the passenger car systems that you may be familiar with. So after I depress the actuation pin inside, the key internals are essentially these two locking wedges. And what's different about passenger car systems where they just use oil pressure to move two lock pins, we have an intermediate pin we call the activation pin. And when that pin moves down, these pins move in unison. So we never have a condition where we have just one pin engaged. It's either both engaged or both disengaged. We sequence the movement of the lock pins to avoid some failure modes that are uh, problematic on the, the passenger car systems. And inside the bridge, we have, these are our little locking elements here. And then inside of the bridge, there's an hourglass shaped 
locking pin that's again moved up and down by the oil pressure in the engine.